This video is going to talk about simplifying fractions. Fractions can be written A over B, some number divided by another number, as long as B, the bottom number, is not equal to zero. So here are the different kinds of fractions that we can have. We can have proper fractions, and in a proper fraction, the numerator, or the top part of the fraction, is going to be less than the denominator, or the bottom of the fraction. So that would be something like one half. One is less than two. Improper fractions are going to be where we have just the opposite. The numerator number is going to be bigger or greater than the denominator number. Oops, I spelled that wrong. And we'll just, you know, it's this number, this word here. <laughs> the denominator. So it would be something like 11 over 5. The top number is bigger than the bottom number. Mixed fractions have a whole number and a fraction plus a fraction. You've seen these things like when you look at recipes it'll say 2 and 1 half cups of flour. 2 and 1 half would be a mixed fraction. A nice thing to know how to do is to be able to go back and forth between an improper fraction and a mixed fraction because a lot of times in your homework you're going to have a mixed fraction that you have to put into an improper fraction. Um, and sometimes there may be a case where you want to write an improper fraction to a mixed fraction. So I'm going to show you how to do both. We'll start with the improper fraction. I think it will help us understand mixed, mixed to improper first. So if we go from improper to mixed, we can we want to know how many times 3 goes into 26 perfectly? So we would take 26 and divide it by 3. And it so happens that 8 times 3 is 24, so it goes in 8 times perfectly, but there's two little pieces left over. So this mixed fraction would be 8 whole parts with 2, and we have to write it over that same denominator because that's the kind of fraction it is. It's the thirds fraction, so we have 8 and 2 thirds. Now with an improper fraction, there's a little trick that helps you be able to do it. Um, remember we were divided 26 by 3 and got 8 going into it perfectly. Well if we go back we can multiply 8 times 3 and then we would add the 2 more and that would tell us how many thirds we have. So we have 24 plus 2 more, or just like we started with above, we have 26 thirds. So, so simplified fraction, what is a simplified fraction? Simplified fraction means that the numbers are going to have nothing in common. Okay, a simplified fraction, the numerator, I'm just going to use shorthand here, and denominator have no factors in common no common factors. So good thing to do here would be just to prime factor each of these numbers. So if I take 12 I can say that that's 2 times 6 and then that would be 2 times 3. Or you can look at this as 4 times 3. That's, there's another way of looking at 12. And then 15 would be 3 times 5. Now I have everything prime factored, and then all I need to do is find the common prime factors top and bottom. And they both have a 3. The top and the bottom have a 3. So they are really a factor of 1, and 1 times anything is just what you started with. So we have 2 times 2 over 5, or 12 fifteenths is going to be equal to 4 fifths. If we take 144, I'm going to prime factor over here because that's a big one. That would be 2 times 72, and 72 would be 2 times um, 36, and 36 would be 2 times 18, and 18 would be 2 times 9, and 9 would be 3 times 3. That's a lot of factors. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then two threes. 
And then on the bottom, if we take 54 over here, that would be 2 times 27. And 27 would be 3 times 9. 3 is the prime factor. And 9 would be 3 times 3. So we have 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. So we've done the prime factors. Now we're looking for common factors top and bottom. So those cancel each other out. And this 3 will cancel out that 3, a factor of 1, so that we can factor it out. And that 3 will cancel out that 3, or factor out that 3. And we have 2 times 2 times 2 over 3, or 8 over 3. So 144 over 54 is 8 over 3. One last example that you'll have common in your homework. And this one is actually going to me make me need my calculator. So when I do my calculator, actually the first thing that you can see is that if I take these two numbers, they both have these three zeros at the back. That's kind of like saying if I divide this thing by um, 100,000 and divide this one by 100,000, then it's really the same thing as just saying, okay, well, I can cancel since they're all the same zeros. You normally can't do this with numbers, so I really am hesitant to say this. But if you have zeros, only zeros, then I can cancel out my zeros. And I really, or if I divide by 100,000, if you're afraid you're going to make a mistake, then divide by the 100,000 because they were all, both in the 100,000s. I just have 110 divided by 286. 110 isn't too bad to prime factor. It's even, so we divide by 2 and that gives us 55. And we can see that that one's going to be divisible by 5. And that happens to be 5 times 11. And those are all prime numbers. We're going to say that that is 2 times 5 times 11. When I look at 286, it's a little bit harder to see. It's kind of a big number. And actually, there ends up being a number where I really don't know what it is. Well, I'll start it out. 286 is even, so I'll divide by 2, and then that gives me 143. And now I'm stuck. It's not an even number, it doesn't divide by 5, and I might divide by 3, because you see that 3, but it really doesn't divide by 3. So here's the trick. You take your number, 143, and start dividing it by prime numbers. I know 3 doesn't work, 2 doesn't work, 5 doesn't work, uh, 7 is not going to work because if I do 7 I'll go into 14 but then I'll have this 3 left over. So 9 might work but 9 doesn't work because it gives me a decimal. So try again. 143 divided by the next prime would be 11. And if I divide that by 11 I get a perfect number of 13. So that means that 143 is 11 times 13 and now 2, 11, and 13 are all prime numbers. So I have 2 times 11 times 13. And you can see that they both have 11. So there's a factor of 1. It leaves me with 2 times 5 over 2 times 13. And 2 times 5 is 10. And 2 times 13. Oh, I have a common factor. Always double check that. I had another common factor, so it's really going to be 5 over 13.